Alrighty, so we're going to be building on our lesson that we went over yesterday. So yesterday we worked on our plot diagram, right? Breaking all of the stories that we've ever been able to read or listen to or watch, we can break those into five parts. This creates a map for our stories, ways that writers write them, ways that we can be able to write stories in the future. So this gives us a guide, a map to go along. So our book yesterday that we read, If I Ran the Zoo by Dr. Seuss, we were able to place all of those parts of the story into these five parts of the diagram. So we go from arriving at the zoo to realizing that we can make changes to coming back to reality, knowing what reality actually is, knowing what's at the zoo, and then our following action, trying to come up with a compromise, right? And then our resolution, finding different ways that we can integrate maybe new things to the zoo to make it more exciting, and what is already there, what we have to work with. So today we're going to be taking a look again at these five parts and then adding on to that some more important parts of the story. Can anyone name me um, maybe two more important parts of a story that would stand out to them? Like what do you connect with when maybe you are reading a story or watching a movie? Characters, right? People, um, their journeys. Um, and then another one that we're going to be looking at is setting. So where is this story located? What era is it in? What is the timeline of the story? How long is this story taking place? Maybe it's taking place over a 10 year period. Maybe it's over a three day period. So we're taking a look at the time setting and the location setting. So location setting being maybe it's in a forest. Maybe it is in a zoo like we just read before, right? So these different settings are going to create our visual, our mood for this particular story. So looking back at the story that we just were able to read last class, the If I Ran the Zoo story, we are going to be going ahead and taking a look at the characters and the setting. So for our characters, we are going to name off um, some physical roles, some physical appearances, mannerisms, and goals of our character. So looking back at our character, we have our main character, right, the young boy. So he, his role in the story, he's kind of acting as our tour guide, right? Telling us what is in the zoo, what we can expect, and then also learning to make changes. So maybe he's the constructor, the conductor, making the zoo his own. Um, his physical appearance is, um, we don't like, know a whole lot. We do know that he is a young um, male, so a young boy. Um, he has short hair. Um, these are a few of the physical appearances that we can go on, our mannerisms. Um, he's kind of goofy, right? He kind of dances all over the place. He runs all over the zoo. He has most of the zoo to himself. So he's able to be free and open. And then his goals. So his goals here are to revamp the zoo, to make it more exciting, more interactive. Um, and these are the goals that he is working on. So this is our character. Just from those few words, we already got a pretty good idea of who our character is. And um, from here, we can go ahead and look at our setting, right? So looking at the setting. The setting is obviously going to be the zoo. So diving deeper into the setting, let's go over our five senses. Can anyone tell me um, one of our five senses? Sight, yeah. What are some things that we maybe see at the zoo? Animals, uh, cages, food, sidewalks, trees, the outdoors, the indoors. Yes, right, exactly. So another thing from here, go leading off of that, maybe what can we smell? Maybe we can smell um, like mini donuts being made. Maybe we can smell like the not so good smells of a zoo and what animals tend to do. Maybe we can hear things like tigers roaring or ducks quacking. All these things that we could hear at a zoo. Maybe we could touch, we could feel the hot ground with our feet as we're walking around, right? Yes, exactly. Perfect. So going off of all of um, our five senses, we can lead into more things and dive deeper into the setting here. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and work with a new piece of technology and identifying these new parts of the story in our stories. So we're gonna be taking a look at the story of Cinderella. Has anyone heard or read the story of Cinderella? Good, yeah, I figured we probably have a good mix of people that have heard the story at least. So we're going to go ahead and take a deeper dive into the story. We're going to be taking a look at these different parts of our story, our background, our introduction, 
the rising action, climax, falling action, and our resolution, our solution, our final chapter of the book. So go ahead and grab out your laptops, your computers. We're gonna be taking a look at our activity that we're gonna go through. So I'll go ahead and put this website up at the top of the board. We have learner.org and I'll make sure that the link is up there for you guys to see so we can all be matching up at the right place. So from here, we're gonna to come to this website. And from here, we're gonna tell, we're gonna go through all of the different things that we're gonna be identifying in our story. So going from our title, we have Cinderella, so you know what we're reading about, we're reading the story of Cinderella. We're gonna go ahead and be able to identify our setting. So where it's at, when it's at, how long the time period takes. Our characters, who are we seeing in this book? Who are we um, being introduced to? Maybe who can we relate to? Maybe who do we like, who do we dislike? And then we'll go into our sequence. So our sequence of events that are going to happen, our exposition, like our introduction, our conflict, our climax, which is the height of the conflict in the story, and then our resolution. So coming down from the falling action, ending of either resolution. So from here, we're going to go ahead and just read this first paragraph together. A good story is like a tasty soup. It follows a recipe with a handful of ingredients that all blend together. In an interactive, we are going to explore the different ingredients, elements that go into stories that make them so much fun. We're going to be starting reading this story, Cinderella. Then we'll take a look at the different pieces of the tale and how they all fit together. So how all of our ingredients fit together and make our recipe, or in this case, make our story. So after we go ahead and read this, you'll go ahead and click on Tell Me a Story. Long ago, in a faraway kingdom, there lived a girl named Cinderella. Cinderella was kind, smart, and beautiful. So when here, Cinderella was very young, she had a happy life. Then... So from here, it'll go ahead and narrate the story to you. So if you would like the sound on, you can go ahead and leave it on, maybe throw in some headphones um, so that we can all be at our different own paces. And from here, we'll go ahead and take a look at this story and we'll be asked to identify these different parts in the story as we go on. So it'll tell you this entire story, and then eventually it'll be asking you where our setting is. One at. element common to every story is the setting. The setting is where and when the story takes place. Let's explore the setting of Cinderella. Good. So from here, we'll go ahead and explore the setting. Um, we'll be asked to identify a few different things, how long the story takes place in, um, what the time period is, and where it is located. So we'll go ahead individually and go through these different parts of our story, identifying our plot diagram and then identifying our characters and our setting. And afterwards, we'll come together as a class and review what you did well on, maybe what we can work on next time and things that you enjoyed with the activity.